What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here. And in this video, I'm just gonna be ranking every subclass in the game. Um, I'm not doing an abilities ranking video because, uh, well, there's a ton of abilities and it's like, okay, well, Vortex Grenade is good, but is it only good because of Controverse Hold and Chaos Accelerant or are Pulse Grenades only good because of Spark of Shock? It's very hard to determine the viability of some things on their own merit uh, because certain fragments and stuff can make things strong. So anyways, I'm not doing an ability one, but I thought it would be fun to just rank the subclasses as a whole. Uh, so yeah, that takes into account their abilities, their supers. Um, yeah, and just the fragment selection, or I should say aspect selection that they have because they all share fragments. So we're just gonna go in alphabetical order, starting with Arc Hunter. Obviously you have the Assassin's Cowl build, which is very, very strong, even in GMs. Uh, Liar's Handshake is also nice, and those two things can be really good in dungeons. Um, I've soloed a GM with Lucky Raspberry, and it's actually decent. But overall, oh, and Star Eater Scales uh, with Gathering Storm is pretty nice on like day one raids and things. So there are some things that can actually be really strong with Arc Hunter and they have super good ad clear depending how you build into it. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that into A tier. Uh, then we have Arc Titan. Um, just off the top of my head, I'm thinking like Insurmountable Skull Fort, obviously T-Crash with Kyrus is really strong. And it used to be really strong with Arc Oil and I still do really like that build and it's great for ability spam even to this day but um, it has seen some nerfs and overall just Arc Titan in more end game content isn't the best. Obviously like Curious is really good on something like Atrax uh, or like for a burst damage super. But yeah, just as far as the whole kit as a whole, I think it could use a bit of help. I'm really looking for the day that point contact can embrace uh, becomes really good because I feel like it's just one small tweak away from being like Really, really strong to be honest. But uh, with where Arc Titan sits now, I'm gonna say B tier. Now we have Arc Warlock. I really like it with Vesper of Radius, and that's very strong. Chaos Reach is strong, and uh, the Lightning Helmet, whose name I can't think of, is also very good. Uh, Chaos Reach is also, it's not that strong on its own, but obviously with Geomags, it's good, but it's nice because it's a safe. Uh, super to use at distance and then crown of tempests is also really strong um yeah i think i'm gonna go a tier for arc warlock solar hunter obviously celestial is very very good in things like uh gms and raids uh star eater scales with the three shot goldie you can chain uh golden guns um i'm just trying to think Caliban's Hand and Shards of Galanor are really nice in lower end content. So all around, this is very good. And they did just rework uh, Gunpowder Gamble slightly. So it deals a bit less damage to you. Honestly, again, this wasn't scripted. This is just uh, me going off how I feel. And the more I'm thinking about Solar Hunter, I think it can go into S tier. Like I said, it's really good in raids. Um, I solo, well, I didn't solo flawless, but I soloed the zero hour mission with it recently. Like golden gun with celestial now is just such a benefit to be able to have a one shot ability just on demand so often. Uh, solar has a lot of good things in their kit, uh, just as a whole, like you got radiant and restoration paired with Ember of Empyrean. So yeah, uh, good survivability, uh, with that restoration. Just a very, very strong subclass all in all. Uh, I really like Solar Hunter. Next, Solar Titan. I would say it is very, very strong. The Pyrogale build, um, I've done a build video on it and I absolutely love it. It's very good in end game content, like even soloing GMs. The one-off super is really nice. Uh, and then I did my Syntheseps titan build and i said that it's the strongest build in the game for solo flawlessing any dungeon and i believe that wholeheartedly um it's my go-to on any day one solo dungeon when i'm trying to learn so i think it's got one of the best overall like survivability kits with well again just ember of empyrean but then you also have like the sunspots you can run healing grenades 
So I think Solar Titan is honestly S tier. Um, I used Path of Burning Steps to solo a GM this season, the PsyOps uh, Cosmodrome GM, uh, the Battlegrounds one there, and it worked really good with Polaris Lance and Path of Burning Steps. Obviously, Path of Burning Steps used to be stronger, but I loved that exotic. You got Phoenix Cradle. Like I said, Syntheseps pairs amazingly with it. The Bonk Hammer has been nerfed, so it's a little less good, but still, the survivability that this class gives you I think it deserves S tier. And then, I mean, Solar Warlock, there's not much else you have to say. Having done a bunch of Pantheons, they say that they're nerfing well. I'm recording this video before they've talked about that, but they've alluded to it in the past. So if they do talk about it next week or before the final shape, just know that this was recorded before that. But um, doing Pantheon, when you're on Explicator, and he's doing all those fire tornadoes, especially when we're going to be doing a minus 20. I'm recording this after we've done minus 15, minus 20 is not out yet, but you pretty much need a well of radiance. So whatever this nerf is going to be, is going to be kind of difficult because Bungie's kind of painted themselves into a corner and designed a lot of raids where you almost need a well of radiance for certain, I shouldn't say need because you can get by without it, but it's extremely handy to have a well on your team. When we were doing it at minus 15, I was the only warlock on my team and we didn't need a second one, but a second one sure would have been nice for two wells, especially like I said on the planet's boss. So just well of radiance alone is so freaking strong. And then you've got daybreak as well with Don Chorus, which is really, really good. Again, I solo flawless a zero hour mission with that setup. Um, obviously lots of people are soloing GMs with Don Chorus and that daybreak super. It's obviously S tier. Um, there's no question. And I mean, just looking at it, I do think solar is like the best subclass. So the fact that all three classes are in the S tier doesn't really surprise me because yeah, they're very good. But solar warlock is just excellent. I love a mental battle harmony build that I run. There's a, a sun bracers, geez, like Verity's brow, fusion grenades, like I almost should have made an S plus tier actually. Yeah. But anyways, that could be in the S plus tier, but we're just gonna keep it in a traditional uh, setup. But yeah, Solar Warlock, extremely, extremely strong. And now we get a lot weaker in my opinion with um, Hunter on Stasis. Really nice movement with Shatter Dive. Um, I've broken down what all the aspects do and yeah, just the aspects on Hunter are not very strong other than Winter Shroud or whatever the one that gives you like the big dusk field grenades and then they get even bigger with renewal grasps. But that's one very pigeonholed build. Um, but on its own, I definitely don't think Stasis Hunter is all that good. Like withering blades are nice for slowing. I got to the boss room on Birthplace of the Vile and died but I was using the renewal grasps. But anyways, I just, <sighs> I like Stasis Hunter for the movement with shatter skating. Uh, and don't get me wrong, you can absolutely make it work. But when you just look at the kit on its own, I don't think it's very strong. I think, uh, I wasn't sure I'd even have any C tiers and I don't think I'll have any D tiers. So C is probably as worse as it gets but I just don't think Stasis Hunter's kit is in a very good spot right now. Like I said, there'll be people in the comments section flaming me saying, oh, it's my favorite thing and I, I've soloed everything with it. Not saying you can't make it work, absolutely. I enjoy Stasis Hunter, to be honest. I made a video talking about using every subclass to beat Onslaught and I really liked my run with Stasis Hunter. That being said, just objectively speaking, it's not a very strong subclass. Uh, you would just get so much more like damage output with something like Solar Hunter than you do uh, Stasis. And I know Stasis isn't all about like dealing damage. It's more about like crowd control and stuff. But even at that, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's all that strong. Behemoth Titan. Now, this is a funny one because in lower end content, it's basically overkill. But when you get into high end content, this is actually one of the better ones in the game. I remember Salta Greppo, he soloed Insight Terminus back when solo GMs were actually pretty difficult. And he used Stasis Titan beautifully. 
People use it for Deepstone Crypt to slow down Tanix. It's got a lot of like unique characteristics that you really can't get from other builds, I find. And then once you get into more endgame content, like Cadmus Urge Lance Cap becomes very good. Syntheseps with the super is like the highest total damage super in the game. You can solo Riven with it. Uh, people have been soloing GMs with it. Like Stasis Titan is low key, very strong, but I would say it has a high ceiling, but a tough um, like skill gap to reach that ceiling. So that's why it's such a hard one to grade because it actually is quite strong, but you really need to understand what you're doing to get the most out of uh, Stasis Titan. So I'm kind of debating, I think I might actually put it A tier because I do find that it's very, very strong. And again, Frost Armor hasn't been like talked about, but we did see it in a reveal trailer. So maybe Stasis will be getting buffed here, but yeah, Stasis Titan, I think is very good, especially for end game. Like I said, in at level content, it's kind of overkill and it doesn't really shine, but in end game, it's very good. Stasis Warlock, obviously you have Osmiomancies and the Bleak Watcher build, but outside of that, again, I don't think the kit offers all that much. I would say it has the worst super in the entire game. Uh, it's just not very good. Um, but Bleak Watcher is nice. Frost Pulse, again, I guess I should have stated, but obviously I'm focusing on PVE for this stuff. Stasis Warlock is actually what I like to main in like trials when I'm tryharding and trying to win because Frost Pulse is great for freezing people. The melee freezes people. So again, the melee is weak as shit. Yes, it can like freeze enemies, but the melee is really crappy. And even with Winter's Guile, I think it is, they made it so it would like explode. Uh, that's also very weak. So again, the kit itself isn't very strong in my opinion, but Bleak Watchers are nice and really, really good for like mass ad control. So I think I'll put it in B tier. Again, I soloed GMs with this this season, Birthplace and Corrupted. I'm not saying you can't make any, of, you can make all these subclasses work, but just objectively speaking, I don't think it's that powerful. Uh, so yeah, again, hopefully they get some nice buffs in Lightfall, but yeah, B tier sounds good. Strand Hunter. Um, I think Strand Hunter is very, very good. It's roaming super is maybe the best roaming super in the game. It would be between that and Blade Fury, in my opinion. Excellent roaming super, great maneuverability with like the grapple grenades. All the aspects are also very strong. Whirling Maelstrom is up there with like one of the strongest aspects in the game, in my opinion. Uh, then the double grenades is really nice. What else do they have? I'm kind of blanking. Oh, the suspend dodge and I'm missing another one. But uh, yeah, overall the kit for strand hunter is very good. The problem is they don't have a lot of strand specific exotics. You got Sudarachnes and that's really good, especially with Whirling Maelstrom. I like running Lucky Pants or Six Coyote and those are both class neutral exotics. So this has like some room to grow if it gets like a really strong exotic. But just the base kit, because again, like six coyote, that's two dodges. Um, but it pairs really nicely with what this kit offers. I'm very tempted to put it S tier, honestly, and I feel like people might flame me. But when you actually like delve into how strong it is just at a base level, you can do some really, really strong things on Strand Hunter. But is it as strong as like the solar kits? That's the question we got to ask. And I don't think it is quite as strong. So A tier, like a solid firm A tier, just out of S. I think Strand Hunter is really good. Next, we have Strand Titan. This is obviously going in S tier. Um, it's busted as hell with Banner of War. I'm sure that's going to get looked at in the final shape. But uh, just Banner of War alone and then into the fray, it gives you melee energy back. Like the, uh, the synergy on this class is so, so good. Again, one of, if not the best roaming supers. And then, yeah, you got shackle grenades, which are really good, but everyone runs grapple with this and just like the infinite grapple melees with worm God. Um, again, it's sort of similar to stasis Titan in that you need kind of a high ceiling to make this work because when you're into the fray like that and just going in on enemies, 
there's a good chance of dying in like higher end content, but they all just get like melted so quickly. But if you know what you're doing with this, I mean, people are soloing Pantheon with it, like snazzy rock and stuff like it would be blasphemy to not put an S tier. Uh, so yeah, I'm expecting some nerfs, uh, but it, it probably needs to happen. But again, the, the big problem with it is just infinite grapple melees. If they can find a way to just get that in check, it won't be so busted, but it will still be very strong. Because even on its own, like just the three Blade Fury melees are really, really strong or whatever they're called. Blade Fury might be the super, but, um, but yeah, the melees on their own are really strong. It's just the infinite grapple is what makes it so busted. Uh, but yeah, excellent, excellent subclass. Could be the best one in the game right now. Like even surpassing these solar ones in all honesty, like definitely the highest ceiling. These ones have uh, more appeal to like everyone. But yeah, Strand Titan, insanely, insanely good. Strand Warlock. Um, yeah, I love Strand Warlock. It's a ton of fun. I love my Threadlings build. I think Weave Walk needs two Fragment slots. Uh, that would be a nice change to see in the final shape. But um, then you also have the, I can't think of the name of it, but where you swallow the grenade and then you can like infinite suspend everything, especially with uh, Necrotic Grips because then it can like spread. And yeah, you can just suspend whole things. So the Needle Storm Super is one of the best one-off supers in the game. Just kind of looking at the list, it might even be better than Curious. I'm not sure Curious Thunder Crash, but again, this is at a base level. So really good one-off super, uh, lots of things you can do with it. Uh, like there's a few exotics that work really nice on it. A lot of people in my comments have been saying use like uh, Graviton Lance or a good void weapon with Nezerak Sin and you can get like crazy ability spam. So yeah, a solid, solid A tier. I think uh, Strand Warlock is really good. Tether Hunter. So this has seen a huge glow up with Onslaught and Orpheus rigs, kind of hearkening back to the Reckoning days where uh, you would just like pretty much infinitely chain tethers. Um, so that's obviously very strong. Spectral Blades, useless in PVE as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they could use some love. The multi-shot is also nice with Orpheus rigs on like a raid boss or something. You get a 30% debuff. So that alone, really good. And then I've talked a lot in videos recently about just how good invis is and you can pretty much go permanently invis. So Void Hunter is really nice for that. And that's really good to like help you learn how to navigate harder content. So yeah, Void Hunter has a lot of good going for it. I'm tempted to put it into S tier, but it's just like, is it as strong as these things? Um, again, this one's really content specific because it's like obviously the meta for Onslaught, but Onslaught is basically like a huge horde mode so naturally something that can like disarm enemies for a brief time and make them take 30% damage. And if you can chain that very frequently, that's obviously going to be strong, but just as like general play, it's also very good. We ran, uh, we were doing like 12 minute night, uh, corrupted runs with a void tether on the team. Um, fuck it. I'll go S tier. I think void hunter is very, very good. Um, Void Titan. I've been really loving Doomfang Pauldrons. I've always loved Doomfangs. Uh, you can pair this with Hoyle. It doesn't really have a lot of uh, like class specific exotics now that I'm thinking about it. Those are really the only two builds that I run on Void Titan that are kind of springing to mind. Uh, I guess Helm of Saint 14. It's got like some unique uh, like niche use cases. But again, you don't see people running Helm a lot. Hmm, jeez. Bastion, all it does is like gives you an overshield. And I know uh, not controlled demolition, but the other one, offensive bulwark, benefits from having an overshield. But again, do you want to spend a whole aspect slot on that? And Void just in general is a pretty good subclass, but the Void Titan kit, Again, Doomfangs, it's one of my favorite builds. I love running it. I'm hoping to get a build video out before June, but that could be very hard for me. Uh, but anyways, I'm kind of feeling B. I just don't, it's like, if I'm going to solo something, 
Void Titan isn't springing to mind. Is it fun? Yes, but is it very strong? I think it could use a bit of help. Controlled Demolition is very good with the uh, volatility that you get. Um, I think it's close to A tier, but we're just gonna put it in B because I don't think it quite stacks up with these. And then we've got Void Warlock, which I love Controverse Hold. It's still very, very, very good. I soloed um, the Moon Battleground GM with it just recently. Uh, still holds up and that was without any Void Surge, without any Void Artifact mods. Um, I take it into day one raids. Uh, yeah, you can proc Devour easily. You got Briar Binds with Child of the Old Gods. I think it's a firm A tier. I definitely don't think it's quite as strong as, ah, geez. Again, it's it's really dependent on the content because it's like, how do I put this up here? Yeah, they're pretty equal. But like I said, you can just get so much invis and that helps a lot of people. <clears throat> but even still, just looking at this list, I think that's pretty fair. I definitely think Stasis Hunter needs help. Um, these ones, I think no one would argue that they could use some buffs. Uh, and then these are kind of probably where subclasses kind of want to be. That's probably kind of what Bungie's looking for as far as balance. Solid, good utility in whatever way you want to use it, but not busted. And then, I mean, solar is just so strong. It's obvious, like... Solar is pretty much the go-to, and it's not just because of this season. It's not just because of Revitalizing Blast giving a 15% weaken. I have long been saying that Solar is the strongest subclass in the game. So, uh, yeah, just looking at this list, let's uh, do a fun little ranking. I would say that the subclasses as a whole, uh, the best is Solar. Then I would say you have Strand, and you could even argue Void being second place, but strand obviously with the outlier being strand titan just being so strong i think that definitely gives it second place third place i would say you have void 100 percent, and then fourth place i would say is arc and then i still think stasis is lacking so just seeing these that's probably how i would have ranked them one through five uh if you just had to ask me on the street and then now that I like see each subclass on their own, it pretty much, like if we gave one point for here, two points for here, if we were to tally those up, that's exactly how the rankings would turn out. So I'm actually very happy with this list. I feel that's fair. I think the reasons I gave are fair. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, like I said, I think if you were to pick some subclasses that need help, it would be these ones. This super is trash, please buff it. And then, uh, yeah, I would say all these are very, very viable in Endgame. So, yeah, that's the list. Um, if you're still watching, thanks for listening to me ramble. I hope you found it entertaining and enjoyable. And if you did, leave a like and be sure to subscribe. I don't think we'll hit 50,000 before Final Shape, sadly, but um, whatever. We'll keep growing. I'll keep putting out content. I've been having lots of fun making content. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Take care.